Hi folks, welcome back to the Car Boutique's Detailing Channel. My name is Andrew. And I'm Carl. Excellent. Okay, so today's review, like you saw on the thumbnail, why you clicked on it is you want to know all about Hydrowax, and indeed we do as well. Now I'm going to put links into all the built hammer reviews we've done previously. We've looked at their three main waxes, which are double speed wax, finish, and auto balm. This is the additional one, all right? And then it's all about choice which one you go for. So we've got a lovely car. We'll give you a quick spin around on the outside, and then we'll get it inside after a comprehensive and safe maintenance wash um, and we'll start testing the uh, hydrowax okay so the car today is a stunning mark 8 golf r now this is a beast not to 62 in 4.7 seconds uh 320 brake horsepower with 420 newton meters of torque so it is an absolute animal um now it is in very very good condition we've had this before but it's got all the normal grime around it so we're gonna be very, very careful with the diamond cut wheels, give it a very, very safe maintenance wash and chemical decontamination. Um, but it's got all the normal dirt and grime that we're gonna remove and then do a survey of the vehicle to see if it needs any sort of additional correction, which I'm hoping it doesn't. I'm planning not even to clay bar this. So stunning car, um, take a listen to this. Carl, what do we think of this car? It's stunning, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Absolutely. I think I want one. Look at this, it's like a cockpit. And then if you press that button there, now black it. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> okay, so what we've done, what you should have seen now is Andy do a sweep around this absolute stunner of a car, and we're going to quickly talk about the products that we're going to use in this safe maintenance process. So, first of all, obviously, we're going to do pre-wash, so that's done with uh, Surfix HD, about 50 mil with a, a litre of water. We're then going to follow up with our auto foam, okay, working at about 2% PIR. Then we're going to come in with our contact wash then, so that's going to be auto wash, highly concentrated shampoo, so about 5 mil to 10 mil of water, uh, 10 litres of water, sorry. And then we're going to follow up with a, a quick chemical, chemical decontamination with Corazole, and uh, hopefully that should be our car nice and washed and then we will drag that inside to then test that hydro wax. Okay, so that's a maintenance wash done and chemical decontamination. A slight bit of fallout that we noticed, but not much. Just not a lot. Lower third. Yeah, not a lot. It it's really is a very, very new car, so we weren't expecting a lot. No. And, and it, yeah, it, there wasn't a huge amount on there. Tiny bit of tar. I think there was three spots and a few yeah. marks that we got rid of as well. 
Um, car does not need claying. However, Carl did notice um, a few um, minor scratches, uh, I think where the dog's jumping in on the sort of sill at the bottom of the boot. And he doesn't need a second um, invitation. <laughs> Straight out with your machine polishers, done a great job, um, but, uh, which is good. So um, at this point, you've got options. Now, um, whenever you're applying an LSP, in our case, we're going to be applying the liquid wax. Um, your car needs to be as clean and as a good condition as possible. So um, if your car is, uh, requires claying and then machine polishing, great. If it's, if it's got some slight um, blemishes, you can use Built Hammer's um, Cleanser Polish, which is a light abrasive filler. So it's going to um, have a slight compounding effect, sort of level those scratches. It's going to film as well if you need to. But we're quite lucky. Our paintwork is pretty, pretty good. So we can go straight, in our case, to Cleanser Fluid. Now, this cleanser fluid is a great preparation for the wax that we're ultimately going to be using, and it's going to get into the pores of the clear coat and really extract any LSP um, or any sort of final contamination. Now, we did notice, or we suspect, this has got some kind of LSP on. It's not great, but there's definitely something on this car, isn't there? Yeah, I think it's a case of when uh, our friend has picked this up from the uh, dealership. Obviously, as we all know, they put some sort of, I would say, probably glaze or some type of... Uh, abrasive polish or something like that uh, on there to make it look make it pop yeah. so I think we've still got the remnants of that on there so we're going to use the cleanser fluid now to get rid of that last bit of that LSP get rid of that last bit of decontamination before we apply the wax absolutely let's crack on yeah Okay, so the cleanser fluid, nice and easy to use. A couple of um, application methods, you can spray it straight onto the actual um, panel itself and while it's still wet, um, just go over it. It's got a very um, chemically smell, um, you know, that solventy smell and constantly rotating your cloth because the idea of this is to actually apply it and then migrate all the contamination into the cloth. So you're constantly rotating your cloth. Um, flashes off quite quickly. So really get yourself loads of micro, uh, microfibers. Of course, the other way you can do it is you can apply it direct to the actual microfiber itself. All right, and do it exactly the same way. And you're just gently applying it. You can see where you've been. Rotate your cloth. And this is the bit where you're actually pulling the contamination into the microfiber and taking it away rather than just sort of smearing it around your vehicle. And it is easy as that. So, myself and Carl are going to share this one bottle because, in fact, we've got two bottles, haven't we? We have oh, got yeah, two bottles, do. yeah. So we're going to um, thoroughly uh, cleanse this car um, in preparation for the wax. car has been suitably treated with uh, cleanser fluid. Um, very, very chemical. It's essentially a solvent cleaner. However, a top tip and an observation, when I did the demo, we used a short pile microfiber. We both uh, noticed that if you apply with a, a short pile microfiber and then remove with a, uh, a really plushy one, um, it's a lot easier and doesn't leave um, any sort of uh, you know, product behind because we were yeah. fi finding that was a bit smeary trying to remove it switched to this one and it just disappeared that yeah, was my yeah. finding yeah so so yeah it was unusual when we when you come to sort of a, a panel prep mm. that we needed two different sorts of uh, microfibers to, yeah. to actually it was definitely leaving it. it was definitely we could have kept going with the short pile but we, when we switched to the, the the long pile it just took the remnants off uh, then uh, it uh, flashed uh, off yeah absolutely it was a much, much easier process mm. once we we worked with the two the two different piles yeah definite difference um the paintwork it, it, it changes the qualities of the clear coat it went from sort of just normal paint to you could tell it changed the surface tension of the of the paint so it's doing something isn't it yeah absolutely um what Andy will show you probably in a moment is uh, the water behavior post our clean it's dead now isn't it, 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 it it's pretty much dead there is still probably a little bit but yeah. um not enough that we're concerned about that would affect how our uh, our wax is going to go on yeah okay we needed to get that blank canvas didn't we really so um we're going to prep for lsp 
Okay, Carl, the exciting bit. We're going to get, get to play with some LSPs, Hydra Wax. Now, the first thing I will say is there are, there's, there's a big difference between a sort of paste wax and a liquid wax. The main one being that that's double speed wax. And obviously, this is uh, a liquid wax where the canorba is suspended in a liquid. As a result, the solvent content of liquid waxes is traditionally a lot higher. And we've both had a smell of this. It smells very, very chemically. It's, it, you can smell the solvent in it, can't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. So, so if you're expecting the same sort of uh, user experience as a paste wax, it's going to be slightly different. But we're hoping because it's in liquid form, it'll be really, really easy uh, to use. Now, if you're looking for a wax that's going to give you that uh, sort of cathartic experience of lovely smelling, it's not going to be for this one. This is, uh, like we say, some products are functional products. They're there to do a job rather than to give you that emotional ex experience of smell and all that kind of stuff. Would yeah, you agree? So, so, yeah, when it comes to waxes, I'm much, I'm, I've only really used um, paste wax and I enjoy that moment of... Solvent, isn't uh, it? Yeah, solvent. solvent. So I enjoy that moment of when you, you're rubbing that in and it's the, the whole experience of not just pushing that wax mm. across, around, but that, that obviously the scent, sense of smell when you're doing the wax. So yeah. this will be definitely a different experience in that mm. term. I think we're probably looking more on that, that sphysographene wax and where that was a very chemical smell. Yep. But we said it was, the whole, it was a functional, efficient wax. And I'm, I'm feeling that's going to be exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. So we're going to um, do a quick demo with this uh, and then see what we think. Um, we are going to do the hydrophobicity check afterwards to prove it's leaving product behind. Um, we're not going to do resistance checks. We're not going to do chemical resistance checks. Um, we're probably going to switch to real world testing from now on um, because we've got a diary and we aim to revisit products. So rather than just, just do chemical resistance, which gives us sort of snapshot, it's not exposing it to all, all the sort of abrasions of airflow and all that kind of stuff. So we will revisit this in three months, but uh, let's, uh, let's uh, reposition the camera and have a play. Okay, so the first thing you do with any sort of liquid wax is make sure the sort of the canorba in this case and the solvent are properly, properly mixed up. Um, if you do find it starts to solidify, just put it into a hot um, sort of bucket uh, for five minutes and then it will go nice and viscous again. So we're really, really mixed up there. Nice and easy then, a fresh, soft microfiber pad and you can see it's almost got a, a gel, a gel-like consistency. And as with any wax, okay, you are still looking for that thin, thin layer. Now, as expected, I'm going to go with Bill Hamber Recommend Circles. It's easier than a paste wax. You can smell the solvent that's suspending that wax in the liquid. But really, really easy. Carl, do you, do you want to come over here and have a play as well and see what you're, you're thinking? But I'll just, yeah, Carl's got his pad as well. Got my pad already prepped. So you just have a play as well. That's Carl over there. See what your thoughts are. You can smell the solvent, can't yeah. you? It's ridiculously easy to apply. Oh, it's just... Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's an efficient way of... It is, it is efficient. And like I say, if, if some people have got resistance to using paste waxes because they think it's really hard work, would you agree that this may be an option for them? Because it's, it's easier, 100% easier. If people are wanting that, that gloss or that, that wet look, I don't, yeah. although uh, we've not finished it off. Absolutely. Then it, this could be a dud car, this, we don't know. Well, it could be. However, this could be the perfect mix for them yeah. in the fact that the speed of application with it being a liquid, the ease, yeah. Really I, smell I, those solvents though. Yeah. Um, like, so this is a functional wax. This is an easy and efficient way of applying canorba wax to your car. Okay, so we are going to leave this. Now the instructions, uh, this is a hazer. All right, so we're going to wait until this haze is over. I think Bill Hamber recommend five minutes. So we're going to keep an eye on that hazing time. Um, and then I will come back um, and uh, analyze ease of removal. Okay, so we've left this about 10 minutes actually because it did start to haze after about three minutes, but we're cognizant that it's quite cold in here. So we've left it for 10 minutes. Um, it's fully hazed over um, and we're going to remove it. Now, um, you do get these um, short palm microfibers that come with the actual um, liquid wax itself. So let's have a play. Carl's on uh, mic up as well. Yeah, I am. So there is an, an element of grabbiness, would you agree, Carl? I think 
if that I'm could honest, be because we've applied too much, we, actually. That's, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think in the areas where I may have applied a bit too much, I've definitely got some grabbiness. But where I've managed to get it lovely and thin, it's just gliding. That's, I'm not... That's... That's easy, actually. Yeah, I agree. Where I've applied it thinner, straight off. Yeah. Easy as that. Really nice. Happy with that. No issues there, would you agree? No, no, not at all. Happy with that. Happy with that. So really, what we're saying at the moment is, and we'll do a wrap-up video at the end, is if you want to quickly apply wax to your car and you don't like the rigmarole of the paste wax, like I said, this might be an option for you. So I'm in agreement, Carl, that we want to uh, use this for the rest of the car. Yep, absolutely. Don't want to swap to double speed wax or finish or anything? Nope. With this? Nope. Good times. Right, let's wax the car. So that's the car waxed and it is looking mighty fine. Now the owner's collecting this in a few hours. So how many hours have we left it since we last waxed it? About six hours. About six hours. So hopefully that's given it enough time to do its thing. And this will be a representation of the actual hydrophobic reaction on the wax. Now we got rid of most of the previous ceiling, whatever it was on the vehicle, and it was pretty dead paint. So hopefully um, we'll see some kind of hydrophobic reaction. Um, so Carl, do you want to do your thing on that sort of bit there? And we'll have a look. I'll take some photographs to zoom in as well. Just keep going. and just in case the camera doesn't pick this up okay I'm gonna take some photographs with the camera now so nice tall beads massive massive improvement um, as you can see from the photographs so we'll um, try and pick this up on the um, GoPro with uh, the, some sheeting so just give it large with the water keep going that'll do Carl's laughing. Why are you laughing? Carl, you always laugh when you're impressed, don't you? I, I laugh when I'm impressed. Because it's going on my shoes. It's going on his shoes. my shoes. However, all the water's gone. Just do that again for the uh, groupsters. Yeah. That is sheeted it's a, it's a nicely. Sh it's a sheeter. Uh, uh, be careful what I'm saying. It yeah. sheets well. Okay, really, really good. Really, really good on that. So, uh, are you happy? I am happy. Excellent. Okay, uh, we're going to dry this car off, obviously. This, that's the only thing about doing these checks after we've done the car. We've got to dry it off, ready for the odour to come back. Yes. Nice hoodie, by the way. Thank you. Where did you get that from? Uh, from Pro Detailer magazine. Oh, that's I right. I won the competition. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> right, we'll uh, reposition the camera and do our summer, summary video. Okay, so that's testing complete. As always, we've gone round with a bit of tyre shine, clean the glass. Okay, you've got the to usual, do that. The usual stuff. The usual stuff. But this is all about Build Hamber's Hydro Wax. Now, the beauty of this is you're going to get two people's opinion. We never, ever discuss what we're going to say at this point, so we might agree, we might disagree. Um, do you want to go first or shall I? You can go first. Okay. Age before beauty. Oh, thank you very much. So, Hydro Wax, in terms, in terms of user experience, um, you don't get the enjoyment of applying a nice smelly uh, uh, paste wax. Um, this is, as we've said, a functional wax. This is about, this is a no frills, 
easy method, efficient method of getting a good um, protection on your vehicle. Easy on, easy off. Um, my two top um, sort of observations are if you apply it too much, it can be a bit grabby. So as with any wax application, nice thin layers. And once it's hazed, maybe leave it a minute or two. Do not leave it too long because I deliberately left a panel um, for about 20 minutes and it does get a, grip, a bit grabby. So practice with it, practice with it. Where do I see this sitting? Um, my personal opinion, having used Finis, it doesn't quite have that pop um, that Finis does. Um, so my comparison really is between this and Double Speed Wax, and then you're factoring the price. So a big part of Double Speed Wax is 15 pounds. This is about 10 pounds more. Um, is it a better product? Don't know yet. Um, in terms of ease of application and removal, this wins. Um, in terms of hydrophobicity, I think it's on a par. The key for me is gonna be the longevity. So if this gives me three months plus, as Double Speed Wax does, this is a very, very good alternative. And then I suppose um, it comes down to whether you enjoy applying a liquid wax or a paste wax, and that is really down to you. Okay, so the jury's out on longevity. I'm really, I'm really hoping this lasts um, because if you're just trying to apply wax uh, for the performance and this is easier to use and lasts on, or lasts longer or is on a par with the double speed wax, this is a good option, um, albeit 10 pound more. Okay, but that's down, uh, that's down to personal preference and budget. So Carl, your honest thoughts. So I'm gonna look at this from, from a wax enthusiast perspective for me, I don't get any enjoyment from applying it in from a whole experience. So when we talk about uh, not just ap ease of application, ease of removal, it's it's the so, smell and everything so else of that. Ease of application removal. Let's talk about that because okay, that's part ease, of the user experience. Yeah, so, so ease of application. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very very easy mm -hmm. wax to apply. Mm -hmm. Removal. Yeah, you have to be really sort of thin layers for this as soon yeah. as it's too thick it's it's grabby as hell and I, I i found that i didn't enjoy that element fair enough and that's very very similar to double speed wax i know you've had limited experience with it but double yeah. speed wax is a bit of a tricky one you've got to get to know that wax and you can get yourself into a bit of trouble but grabby is a valid observation i totally yeah. agree um but it wasn't it wasn't a showstopper no no it's not a but showstopper. it's noticeable and we, we feel you need to know about yeah. it okay and then yeah, it's it's a it's a solvent based solvent based wax. Yeah. Okay. So therefore, I didn't get that enjoyment of mm. the the smells that you do get with some of the some paste wax. That they're phenomenal in that yeah. that experience. And you enjoy that bit, don't you? Because yeah. you're you're an enthusiast when you're applying a wax. Yes, it's off the car protection, but you want to get an enjoyment factor out of it. it. it absolutely. And it, it, but it is a clinically efficient wax mm. as long as you get that layering right. Absolutely. Um, It'd be interesting to see longevity. Okay, so if you've, you've used double speed wax a few times, um, sort of the, the, and I'm, I'm cognizant of the fact that a lot of people will, will be watching this thinking, is this a replacement for double speed wax? Because that is a fantastic wax and uh, highly regarded. So you've used both, what's your opinion? I don't think I can compare these at the moment because okay. when we talk about double speed wax, yep. okay, it's not the easiest of waxes to, to uh, apply and remove. Yep. But one thing double speed wax is good is is longevity and hydrophobic and hydrophobics yeah if this is close to or on par with double speed wax this is a winner all day long i think we've agreed on hydrophobics is on a par it's yeah. that longevity piece that it, we don't that, know that's that's the big thing yeah it? and if you're going to be spending i'm going to go ten there quid more. 10 quid more i want it to perform as good as double speed wax in uh, every aspect unless you want that um you're after as a core variable ease of uh, application removal yeah. which is easier than double speed yes yeah. so it jury's out yeah. i'm going to be honest jury's out Absolutely. but i'd like to see how this car is in three months time yeah but we were really impressed with those hydrophobics yeah. absolutely we? It, it was the sheeting mwah. the sheeting was pucker yeah. as they say right that's it okay if you've uh, used this one or double speed wax or finish or autobomb or any of the auto um uh, the belt hammer waxes leave a comment sharing the conversation and um, we're going to take it outside before it gets too dark give it a quick spin round um, and we've got plenty of more built hamber um, products to review. There's a few new out on the market at the moment. So we'll probably do a few other brands, come back to this in a few months. Yeah, um, absolutely. And uh, uh, continue our journey of discovery on the built hamber brand. So uh, from uh, Andy and Carl, thank you very much. Bye.